Well, hello everybody. We finally made it. Um, we've had a few gremlins in the pipeline today. So we're recording this as a class and we thought that would be a nice way of um, us being able to give you something for the time that you took trying to log into that Facebook Live. Blinking gremlins. I mean, goodness me. Poor old Andrew's worn out a pair of trainers running up and down the stairs. So I'm going to start right at the very beginning because it's a great place to start. And this is a great card. First of all, thank you for joining us at Highlight Crafts. This is our two Red Robins range. It's called Where the Wind Blows. No, whenever the wind, <laughs> wherever. <laughs> um, wherever the wind goes. We've had so much fun with that title over the last month. Just all of us at some time putting our own little twist on it. Um, I wanted to just use this card as a as just a well first of all to say thank you to Steve who's made it but wow isn't it just fabulous this is a card for a teenager it's whether it's a daughter or a male female it's anybody who loves horses it's dad it's granddad and it features one of my favorite dies of the whole year which is ranger and this is the ranger die. And I'm just going to turn that over and let you see him. And what we've done, um, just got one here that I've cut. We've got him in a couple of different colors as a downloadable free reflections. But his mane, his just everything about him is quality. He looks like a real thoroughbred. And he has been used to great effect in a lot of these designs. So I'm going to take you through some of the examples. And as I do, I'm going to bring in the dies that are in this collection. Now, just I've made myself a few little notes because there was so much to be able to tell you. So first of all, there are 46 dies. That doesn't include the ones that are, oh, includes the swift ones, but it doesn't include the number of die cuts. So that's a, a good indication of how much you're getting. And um, it's a great time to join Robin's Nest because... Even if you pay to join the club, you are still going to save £56.91. And, and that's because Nest members are getting triple discount. So you're actually paying £83.99. I mean, it's, it's a great way of being part of this huge craft community. You'll find us regularly on Create and Craft um, regularly on Facebook, I want to say, and we bring you as many of these Zoom classes, workshops and everything else that we can. I'm just going to give you the details of the Robin's Nest membership. It is a 12 month membership and the biggest benefit, like lots of the loyalty programs, is 10% off all the purchases. And you also get free delivery on all orders over £25. And I think they're probably the two biggest reasons everybody joins us. Oh, and don't forget, you'll get free tickets to go into um, any of our crafting live shows. Right. I'm not I don't want to make this a TV Sally show. It's about me showing you what you can do. So I'm going to move quite quickly on and just show you some more of these finished samples because I want to actually get into some of the detail of what we've done. So first of all, you've got these bags of hay or straw, and this is one of the stirrups. So as we go along, I'm just going to share with you because it's almost impossible for me to do every single card with every single design. But if I show you what, what I'm looking at, so this one is called hung up and you've got the stirrup there and it's there. So if I turn this over, this is actually one of those swift eyes. And a swift die is where we've got a piece of base metal and we hold the pieces together so that you don't accidentally lose the smaller ones. So this piece, although it could be a stirrup, it's also um, the bag to put the hay in. So with that in mind, we've got by the pound, which are these multiple bags of hay, and we've got them stacked up which you can see there, but also I've got them in smaller bags here. So if I come back to the card, remembering this piece, this one has been used here and, um, well, actually it's the, it's this bit that's been used and, and the hay bale, or the bag of 
corn, sorry, has been stuck into this panel that we've got here. Stirrups hanging up. Then you can see this piece again, the, part, the bridal um, parts are actually here. Then we've got the little sacks, a uh, little mice are back in there, they're featuring. The cogs that you're seeing there, well, they're just old metal bits of, of um, steel that's hanging around outside in the farm and those are all here, all really useful. This one I'm gonna be using with our windmill, which I'll share with you in a moment, but gives you an overview of the design that we've got. Then we come to the next one. So you're seeing in the wind, which is the windmill. Now, this is one of those nesting dies. So look at again, look at how many different layers that you're getting. And you've got here the windmill arms and those actually fit all the different sizes. And in this demonstration, I'm going to be showing you how to actually make those turn. So that's one of them. Then I've got Forgotten Thistle. Now, the Forgotten Thistles are here on this collection. And now we're seeing the cogs. We're seeing all of those elements from the corns. And we've got the windmill and um, everything all coming together. Just take a note, the barn that's in the background. The swallows are coming soon. They're not available at the moment, but they will be available in a few weeks. So there are lovely thistles. Then I'm going to go on to this one where again we've got the windmill, more of those thistles going up the side of the card, looking really effective. And we brought you the little mouse earlier on in this last week. So now again we've got Ranger in a couple of different places that you can see there. We've got elements of the saddle the elements of the bridle and other elements that um, are for our horse, our horse riding. Then we've got this piece. Now this is quite interesting because this is actually one of our post pieces. And I'm just gonna show you that one, it's here. Um, this one, we've called it Building Foundations and you're getting a lot of different sizes. So you can see those. Another one with the windmill, bringing in some of the other dies from other collections. Again, now we're seeing the barn and the barn is available and it comes in different colorways, but it also comes in different sizes. And this one is a combination of all of those elements. And then I need to just share with you some more examples. So this, I'm gonna ask Andrew if he can do this one flat for you so that you can see, isn't that fabulous? Look at the detail around here. I mean, this is, this is card making and storytelling at its best, which I think you can see. And then this one, just want to stand this one up for you, that you can see. And I was a little bit concerned that the artwork was just a bit dark, which I think it probably is in, on this example. So what we've done is we've given you multiple colorways and they are free to download on the Highlight Crafts website. So I'm just gonna pop these away for a moment because I've got them all spread out all over the place. And I'm just going to show you exactly what is in this kit. So first of all, we've got in in the wind and that is our windmill so you're getting all of that then you're getting the wheat fields and this is all of the barns that carry that hold the wheat and look at the different sizes that you get and there's a lot of nested dies and those two dies together you're getting um what have we got let's see we've got seven in this collection and we've got six in this one so all together there you've got 13 dies just on those two then in this one this is our in gear and this is another 14 dies so again great value for money we've got our thistle which is just the the three dies because you get the thistle in two different colors um, you're getting your building foundations, which is what they're doing outside. So if you can hear a little bit of noise, that's what it is. It's them building the foundations for our new warehouse. So that is super exciting. You're the first to hear anything about that. 
Then we've got hung up, which is the saddle and the other pieces of tack for horses. And you've got all of that just there. And now we've got by the pound. So literally all the elements for the grain. One of the really most useful dies we've got is called into the barn. And there's our barn door and the other elements that you need. And when we first came up with the idea of putting these on a base piece of metal, and making sure small pieces stayed together, it was revolutionary. But it also, it means you don't lose the small parts. And I think that's such an important element of die cutting. And then Ranger, who is absolutely stunning. And there he is in all of his glory. So, of course, each one of these has its own sheet of reflections. You print those out from Highlight Crafts and you've got them to be able to work with straight away. Now, before I get into just using the kit that we've got or the collection, I just I picked at random. This is Forgotten Corner. And I picked um, this because I just wanted to share with you a few ideas of things that we could do with the with the horse. So, for example, there he is. There he sits in there. Look at that. I mean, that is just in my mind is perfect. And I'm just going to bring him there and put our oval round the outline and look at how you can decide where you want to put him, how he's literally going to be in that picture. And it just looks great. The next one that I've got, and I've got this in a, a vellum, but I'm going to bring in the cardstock one, is putting him here coming down the lane from the barn at the back, or why not just have him in the field? In the field, just as he is there, but he might have a, a twin with him. There's his twin brother and the two of them actually in the fields together. And that is the kind of thing that just brings this whole story to life. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I want to do is show you how to take the barn door and make this into a jump for the horses to be able to work with. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I've cut it out and you'll see all of the lines that we've got in here, all allowing me to do lots of different little cuts if I want. So the first cuts that I'm going to do are here. And I'm just cutting in through the pips and I'm using a craft knife because I it's easier for me to get the sharp cuts that I need with a knife rather than with a pair of scissors. And I'm just gonna lift this out and break the pips in each of the corners if they haven't already cut through. So there is, let's just get that piece because that can be a splinter of wood. So there's the first part I've cut out. Then I'm gonna come into here and I'm doing the same thing. And did you notice how I just rotated? Let's just see where you are. It's my next little pip that needs cutting. And I'm just checking these as I'm going. So I need to come across there and I'm just gonna lift that one out. I'm going to come across here and oops, I've taken that bit out. But actually, that's OK, because it might be that this set of fences is a little bit worn or we can pop it back in. So I'm going to take that piece out. I'm going to take this piece. So again, right into the, the detail there, it's moving just a little, so I'm not going to good very good grip on it but it's okay so that piece is going to come out so there so that's the main part then I'm going to take right so I've got to go down here and I want to get this one out so I'm just literally going into that let's see if I've got that remove that I'm going to leave the next one so I need to come down here like this and I'm going to take that out 
So there we go. So there's the piece that we've got. Now, I could choose to put this piece back in if you like, but you know, often when we do stuff for two red robins, it's worn or it's it's had um a you know a bit of hard life, so it's it's seen the best. This one I'm gonna cut through the middle of this part of it because I don't want the bit at the bottom. So I've got to go in and get that piece out, which is gonna be just there and that is going to mean lifting this piece out here and catching the other one in so we'll just get a little piece of tape there which will catch it that side and a little piece of tape just there and i'm going to pull that back so that the tape is just against the area that we want and just like that, tuck that in there and we're good. So just get that bit there out the way and that little bit there. So I've now created my fence and I'll think about whether I need to put that panel in in a second. But I'm coming back into this story and I'm just going to take my horses and I'm just gonna use this for them to have one of them to one side as we've got there, one of them to the other side. And you can see, although he was running like this one is, he looks like he stood just looking over the fence. So it's a really nice way of you being able to, or the gate, you can have it as whatever it is, but this is actually one of the doors to the stable. Looks really great the way that we've done it. And I can still frame the design like that and have got my story there with them literally together. So that is using this piece, which is the door that I have just cut into to create the fence. So that's one little idea for you. Right, now the next one I need to show, I've got loads of it already cut. So I need, I've cut out, or rather I've got Jenny to help me with these. It's her first time of crafting. She did a fantastic job. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna do my windmill next and then I'll come to the doors. Right, so I'll just pop this to one side and all my doors I've been working with and I've got my windmill. So I said I'd show you how to make the windmill actually be a windmill and the and the window uh the this bit the hands turn i don't know what to call them and we're calling them propellers we'll, we'll, we'll google it um or ask alexa i love it when she says i'm sorry i do not know the answer to that one right what we've got here is we've got the main windmill and we've got the sails that's what they're called i've just remembered and so you take the windmill the size of it that you choose. So let's say I'm gonna work with this smaller one. I might want to use those, say, they call them sails or blades apparently. Might want to use that size. So the smallest size works for all of them. I think except the, the very smallest, but you can snip into these. So that would actually work. The middle size works for the second and third sizes, and then the largest one for the first and second size. So that's how I chose which size to work with. I've cut this one twice, and then I went into my cogs, and I've cut the smallest cog, and I've cut that as well. And I've taken, my windmill sails and I've stuck that small cog on the back of it ready. Now I'm going to take another one of those windmill sails and I'm just going to stick this on top because I want it quite quite firm. So I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive over the whole thing. You'll notice some of the squares drop out and some of them don't but that's been done on purpose. I'm just going to layer that up like that. So it's gone on the, on the top, just pulling all that glue 
through. So I've got the arms properly layered. And on the back, I've still got that circle. And the circle just about goes through the middle. So I'm going to use a piece of my foam and I'm just going to take my craft knife and I'm going to pierce through there. So you can see where I've gone. Do not try and do this without using something like your mat because it, it really won't work. Once you've got that worked, you then, you take your brad and you peer, push that through like that, okay? So I've got that pushed right through. Then I've got to decide where this is going to go on my windmill. So whereabouts it's going to, to sit. So about there, I think. So I then come back and I use my craft knife again and I pierce again. Now, the reason I'm using a craft knife and not a pokey tool is first of all, it, start, it gives me a little bit more control when I'm actually cutting through. And my brad has got straight lines. So I need to be sure that I'm getting as much of that in there. Once I've got the hole made, you can then put your pokey tool through and you can roll it in your fingers until you can feel that you've got the hole the right size. And the hole needs to be the width of that brad. And then that brad's gonna go in there. And I've not pushed it in too tight. I've got a little bit of wiggle room. So you can actually see it isn't up tight against the windmill. It's, it's a little bit wobbly because I want, and what I do while I do it, is put my pokey tool behind it and then open up my brad so that, whoops, when that's finished, the windmill, whoops, will move. And that's because we made sure when we did this that there was some movement there. Okay, so that's a little tip for you. Do not let this get too tight, otherwise it just doesn't work. And remember, you do need to put a stick at least two of them together to get that to work. So that's how we get our windmill working, which I, I, just, I just think it adds a little bit of fun to the design. And of course, if we wanted to make this freestanding, so we would take the whole design, put it level with the bottom of our cutting mat, take our mat straight through the middle, and then using a straight edge, you would go from one side to the other and score across the middle. That becomes the fold back. It then gets glued on this part at the top. And what you have to do is make sure that where you're gluing is above the actual um, brad. And that's why I know you guys know how to glue these cards together, but I wanted to share that with you because I wanted to be able to point out that I have gone and scored above where my brad is to make sure that that is still free and moving. And that then becomes your windmill with your movable Whoops. <laughs> so there we go. So there's our windmill. Okay, so that's the first part of what, what I wanted to show you. Oh, quick little bit of coffee. If you just joined us, just give you a quick reminder as well that if you're not a member of the Robin's Nest, you need to join because you actually get um, triple discount and even if you and then you'd also you'd get free pmp as well actually now if if you are getting robin's nest membership please check that out first because um yeah before you add it into the basket so you get the discount right 
this is the one I was looking for because, listen to this one. Sounds more solid, doesn't it? That's because it's been cut a couple of times, but it's this plain black panel, uh, plain black card one that I've been using to reinforce it. So I haven't cut a printed one out multiple times. I've cut just a piece of plain black card and I've used that to cut this a couple of times. So I'm just gonna go along here and I'm quite excited about this collection because I think it's it gives you so much versatility, but also we've done it as individuals because I know, you know, everybody's working to budgets. But the other part of it is that's really, really great. It's, it's such a versatile collection. Now, you can see on our overhead camera the depth of that that, that I've got. So compared to a thing, single piece of card, this one is really is quite strong. And then... What I've also done, so I've got some pieces I'm going to work with in a moment, but I've got the first of my doors, the second of the doors, and then I'll just put that one to one side for a moment. And then I've got some white ones that have been cut and I'm just going to layer these up because these are actually going to be the elements that create the freestanding part of the card. So to layer them up, we need to put the adhesive on and because we've got a lot of fine cuts on here, I take it all the way across the design and then make sure that you get the same design so you get it all always lined up and just pop that in place, get that glue down, make sure it's nice and sturdy, which it is. Then I've got a second panel that I've done the same piece of work with and I've got some more of these cut. So I'm going to go over again and across the whole thing. And when I pop this on, what I was doing when I'm lining it up and making sure that the glue goes out to the edges. So we've got that glue really getting to the edges of the cardstock. So these are now nice and sturdy. That's going to be the back of the design. So we now can decide whether we want the top of the door to have the cross barriers on it or we want that to go to the bottom. That's a personal choice. It really is up to you which way you choose to work with it. Um, and then I've also got another one here which allows me to get some dimension to the design if you choose to so I'm going to go back to where I had my um this one because whoops I'm going to I'm going to reutilize this panel because I didn't glue it down just glued my arm but I didn't glue that down so I can make the most of this panel so what we need to do to be able to create the piece I'm looking for is take out that panel there and then I'm going to cheat because I'm going to go in with my scissors and the reason I'm going to go I'm cheating is because I'm going to use foam to um, to rebuild this so I'm taking that triangle out there because we don't need that one I'm going to snip that piece which I've got that little bit it wants to snip the other way as well so, let's get you out. Oh, still not gone. No. Ah, oh, that's because the scissors aren't snipping right to the end. Um, then I'm going to go down here. So I'm just looking at how I'm going to stop the whole thing from falling to pieces because I don't want that to happen. And I'm going to take this panel out, which should be there. That's good. And what I'm going to do now is something I should have done a moment ago, but it's never too late to put it right. And that's to take my foam that I want to use. And I'm going to join this all up. So I'm going to go up here and round the outside edge. And I'm going to go, whoops, 
all the way along that outside edge there and just get that lined up properly so it's not quite that's done and let's go along the bottom and then I can snip into these other panels without worrying that the whole thing's going to fall apart so that gives me the confidence to make those cuts that I want to make so again yes where am I going to go I'm going to go there oops I can see this one might fall so let me take my tape across that panel and we'll pop it on here while we're at it and this piece because that's another piece that needs some support and finally that one let's go where I can go back in with my scissors is there and I'm just going to trim into that and from behind into that panel there and oh I haven't got that one scissors don't want to work they're not snipping right to the very end so I just have to go in a bit further with them right so I've now got my panel like this so I'm going to take off the backing that we've got and this will then give us the dimension that we want on the doors so it'll make it look 3d it will also give us a little ledge which we want and it gives us a, a more professional finish so all of that pop this down here that lays down there just like that I'm just going to snip that piece with the foam because it didn't go around the corner as easily as I wanted it to tuck that in tuck that piece in and I've got my my panel all set okay so now it means I can tuck things in there if I want to so that's the first of the doors the second of the doors well we've already done all the, a big chunk of that work haven't we so I can just trim up trim that off there I've got a white edge so I'll just trim that and this one across the diagonal there across that diagonal I'm going to go all the way around the outside edge and let's get that round so I'm just using my finger and I'm really sort of putting some pressure on and then teasing the tape around the corner and it will go and what's interesting is when you then take this carrier sheet off round the edges and you press it down it goes down surprisingly flat it's one of those things that just works so it's well worth us actually doing now I know I haven't got that extra panel I've taken that one's out and I could because I saved it I could go back and stick it in but I quite like the idea that they're not all perfect so there are my two doors that I'm going to be working with so the next part of the design this one I haven't cut into which I did is what I did on on here so if I wanted to I could make the bottom panel solid so that's an option so I could do that I could have it so that it opened and this piece was dis disappeared from behind so I could have it so it was like um a stable door that's another option for me but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that for something else later and I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to put the runner across the top of it like that so that is going to hold these together so to make this happen we need a good run of adhesive across the top there just like that and then I place the first one on and it's going to go on there and then the second one is going to go on there so get both of them on together to get the doors level I'm now going to use my glass mat to make sure that the doors are parallel down the middle because we don't want one of them wonky 
So I'm checking that distance all the way down. So just again, come into one of the squares and check that. So happy with what I've done there. I'm just gonna take away that extra little bit of glue that I've got. So just run that in there. Or the other alternative, fine tip glue applicator and take that off there. So we get that nice and clean. Got a little bit of glue that's there that I don't want. Okay, so we've made our stable doors and we're happy with those. We just need that glue to now properly catch. So I'm just going to leave that for a minute or two. In fact, let's put my cup on it. Might not be a good idea, but I think it's okay. Then we're going to take a couple of our horses and I'm going to decoupage him. So I want to get some detail in here. I'm just going to move that because and put it under this box because I figured that tea might go everywhere. I'll put the tea in the box. That's a good idea. Right, so how do we deck, where do we go with this decoupage? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go around, hit that hoof, and we're gonna take out just that back leg there and his back ear there. That's, that's the first part that we're taking out. And we're going to put flat glue on the bottom of his feet. So just the smallest amount there and up on his ear and his bottom of his nose. And then just a small piece of tape is going to go in here, there. Lift that up. And this is the first layer that's going to go onto the horse and get his feet absolutely lined up perfectly first, then focus on his face. And then the next part of it that will come together will be his body. And that will start to just naturally get that curve in it and shape. The next one that we're going to do is the, the last layer that I'm going to do. And I'm only going to do um, a couple here because I think... You can keep going with this one, but I think it looks um, it looks good if I'm going to do if we do what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to take off that foot. I'm going to take off that bit of his foot. I'm going to go along that part of his leg. I'm going to go right up round his butt there, and take that one. And I'm going to take this front one, and I'm using that part of his, um, where we've put the, the little curves in and the little, the little dots. And you can see that that start really gives his body a bit of depth. So let me take that out there or putting that in and you've got the depth of his body. So the bits that need to actually go flat against it are the tip of his tail, because we want, we want that um, we can take the very bottom of it and let it swish up, but we don't want it to swish too much. His paw, his ear, his nose, and his butt, this bit. Then we take some tape down the middle. And I've not gone too high with this, so this should work really well. I'm going to um, get his paw on first, so that's lined up. Get his head on next and his ear. So let's get that ear. And the butt's naturally going round. So is his tail. And then at the end of the tail, you just get your pokey tool, the bit that I didn't glue, and just flick up that bit of little bit of his tail. And you'll get him to be really beautifully decoupaged. And I just, he looks so dimensional at that part, which I think looks really clever. Now we're going back to our stable doors, which are now ready. He's going to be coming out of the stable like that and look at the dimension. So we can decide if you want him right on the front like that or just peeking out. It's up to you, but I think it works either way. It just looks really good. Next part of it. I need a sack here. I think that one's going to be too big. So I'm going to go to a smaller one. I'm going to take this and decoupage here. So just round 
there. And again, the foam goes in the middle. So I'm not trying to get the decoupage to be really deep. I just want to get dimension and illusion, I think is probably the best word. And so up those edges, up to that top, and then down there. And this will sit to the front like that. So that's the first part. Then I'm going to get some of my thistles and a thistle is going to go here. And I know it's larger, but I want to get, I want to use, um, I want to use the, the power of the, the flower and the design to actually be able to create some height. And if you've ever seen globe artichokes or thistles, they grow this big. They are literally like giants in the gardening world. They're, they're fabulous. So that's going to sit there. My, um, my wheat is going to go here. And before I stick that one in, I get another one that tucks underneath like that there and isn't decoupaged. And this one, which is, goes over the top. And so you've got decoupaged elements and it's decoupaged there as well. And that one's completely flat, looks effective. We're then going to go with the saddle and I'm just going to lean, I'm going to decide where we're going to lean this saddle. And I think when I was thinking about the design earlier, I was thinking I would just lean it against the sacks. And I think I'm, I'm, I am going to do that. So I've got to think about where my glue is going to go here. So I'm going to use my foam that I've got and I'm going to roll it widthways. So I've made sort of like a little tunnel if you like of of the foam and that is going to go just behind there a tiny bit and there and then I'm going to use wet glue as well along the edge of it and here so this is going to catch the the saddle so it looks like it's in the top of the um the corn and the sack and I've got that just there and we'll, let's put a tiny bit of glue behind it get that held in place I've got the elements that are from the um bridal reins etc oh I've got to tell you I once went to horse riding I've got a friend called Paula and Paula is a really good um athlete she's so super fit and in a previous life that I had my husband used to play a lot of cricket in fact it was his job at one point and um so Paula and I used to go and do craft stuff oh not craft stuff we used to do stuff together mostly drinking gin but anyway we were um she was um with me and we were doing some some just going out and doing stuff and it got suggested that I got her to do something creative and she got me to do something sporty. Well, I couldn't really think of anything that I wanted to do sporty. So she suggested horse riding and I'd never been in my life before. So before, and nobody knows this except my little sister. So before we went horse riding, I had never been on a horse before. So I decided that the least I needed to do was at least have been on a horse. So the week before we went, I should have done it sooner, but I didn't. Um, we went on a horse. And I, so I went to the stables and I had a horse riding lesson. Well, it was an absolute disaster because, first of all, I couldn't get the rhythm right. Secondly, the lady who was taking us got cross with me for laughing because every time. So, let me, Andrew, can I show everybody this? So, right, don't criticise me. Please do not criticise me for my horse riding efforts, okay? Because I am not a horse rider. So, on, when, you're, when you're riding a horse, you go like this, okay, as you go along. And as the horse moves forward, you go with the horse, okay? Well, I know you'll all be shouting at me, it's not like that, but it's not like this either. So, every time the horse went like that, we were going like that. 
bumping along, smacking his bottom. So the faster the horse went, the faster my sister was smacking her bottom. Well, I was crying, laughing. Then it came to do it my turn. And the, the um, lady teaching us was not happy. So anyway, we did our class. We came away. The next day, my thighs. I was walking like John Wayne. I could not walk. And on the Saturday, I had to actually go on this horse riding um, adventure, which was, uh, God, I don't know how many miles we went. It was what they called a hack. So we went on this thing, this hack. First of all, I couldn't get on the horse because my thighs hurt too much. Secondly, I got on the horse and it kept stopping to eat. Well, I felt sorry for it, so I let it. Um, then thirdly, by the end of the hacking, my thighs were so painful, I couldn't get off the horse. And then they told me I'd got to take the tack, the horses, the saddle and everything, back up into the tack room. Well, I took it up, fell all the way down the tack room stairs, landed in a pile of and had to sit on a plastic bag all the way home. <laughs> Andrew says he's got to beat me out. Have you? Well, that's it, what do you call it? It's old oh, horse poo then. Whatever it was, I sat in it. And if you smelt it close up, I honestly, I had to sit on a plastic bag all the way home. I've never been horse riding since. Um, yeah, I just, I'm not a good, I'm not good with horses. That I think they know, they know. Are you really not allowed to say that word, Andrew? Is it a swear word? What even when a horse is involved? Oh, sorry for the beep, everybody. Oh, oops. Anyway, that was my horse riding adventures. So yeah, never go again, poor thing. And I had this big old Dobbin. He must have looked at me and went, oh, when can I retire? <laughs> can you imagine? Poor, poor, poor Dobbin. Anyway, going back to this, I'm just going to cut out the top one of our little um, bags. And I'm going to layer that up and get the bottom ones just a little bit further over. I'm feeling like that saddle's at a bit of a wonky angle, but... Those of you that are um, equestrian types, um, is that a type? Have I just been, uh, uh, yeah. But, uh, so you will know that that probably should be at a different angle. Let me see if I can do it, I can. Um, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it down on the floor, I think. Yeah, let me put it there. And then we'll, we'll put another bag over this because I've got some glue there so I can. So, in fact, let's ground it. So we'll ground the we'll ground the saddle. Oh dear, it's been one of those days today, and now I've got a beep in my in my Zoom. <laughs> oh dear, sorry, Andrew. It actually has just told me it's a good job we recorded it because I'm not allowed to do that. I didn't realise if you said it with reference to an animal, I thought it was all right. Mm. Uh, I think I'll not mention that bit. So, right, what I'm going to do now is I've just got my silicon, my glue gel, and I cleaned this yesterday and got it so it was unbunged, but overnight it might have just yeah there we go so I'm just going to put that over these thistles but remember they could be um artichokes because they grow massive and I'm actually because they've grown so well this year I'm going to leave them and let them grow up come back again next year because they were just fabulous and that just finishes that off Right, still haven't got my horse in in um, in situ, and I've got my and I've got the two doors to put on at the back. So I'm going to take both doors as I've got them here. I'm going to use a piece of tape that's going to go across there, and it's going to go straight across both doors. And I'm going to make sure that that is well stuck. 
we'll take the tape off the backing tape off all of them together let's get rid of that I'm going to run my pokey tool along the edge of the backing tape so that and use red liner if you've got that handy at home then these need separating which I've managed just done break that against the tape pop that onto the back like that so let's turn that over do the same on this side so we'll get that one in place like that so now when I stand it it's completely freestanding so there's our card and then I now need to just decide where our horse is going to go and whether I'm going to stick him to the back put him out to the front just there and then take his friend and put his friend to the back so the way that we do this this one is just going to stick straight down just there like that so we'll get some glue on this part of him so up there onto the edge and down so that he is touching the floor like that so just looking out there and then his mate is going to go so his tail is just tucked inside but he is attached to this front one here so we'll get some tape and we'll pop that on that panel that you can see here so you can see I'm just going to catch that down um, just make sure that edge is all tucked up pop him so oh not liking that you're going to see that so I'm just going to take that off got a bit of weathered wood now there I'm just going to pop him there like that that's well stuck so now I'm really happy with that so you can see a little bit of his face coming through from his friend that's inside you've got a place to write whoops I'm just going to get that tape stuck properly a little bit of wet glue on there as well everybody he it will all fold flat to go in an envelope you've got the his little tail I'm actually put him to the front rather than the back no let's put it inside it makes you want to open up the inside there's the story so that's the start of it you've got a really interesting I'm gonna just pop this behind it so that you can see that detail we could if we wanted to also maybe because they're looking through, there's a window behind we could put a field behind it but that's using and working with the whenever the wind blows and goes wherever the wind goes and let me just give you a quick reminder of everything that you're going to get so you get all the cogs that you can see here the windmill and the windmill sails blades or sails and don't forget you can do them so that they turn like I've done here then you're going to get the building foundations plus you'll get the all of the tack for the for the horse you're going to get the thistles you're going to get our fab um by the pound you're also going to get ranger and you'll get the wheat fields and all of that has got um triple discount for club members and 83 pounds 99 pence and don't forget you can use clear pay and paypal pay in three and that helps you reduce those payments um i'm sorry again once more for all the problems we had with our um facebook live we'll try and see what we can do about the gremlins perhaps we just need to train them a bit better um who knows let's just finish off with a couple more samples and have a little look at these remember what a great way of building the design then we've also we've got it with our windmill 
we can add lots of detail in here to get all the designs coming together. And then finally, don't forget, this is a, another idea of just having the freestanding stable doors and, of course, everything going on around there. So it's been my pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Um, stay safe. Don't forget, visit Highlight Crafts for, to get all your reflection downloads. Um, sorry if any of you horse people, I'm sure you'll put me right anyway, you always do. And um, that beep, that was because I said, oh, I nearly said it again. Um, see you all soon. Bye-bye.